Okay. Perfect. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today for a professional development workshop, Duluth Excellence, Building a Collective Vision. The Duluth Chamber is very grateful to be able to provide these offerings free of charge to our members because of the generosity of our sponsor, the College of St. Scholastica Stender School of Leadership, Business and Professional Studies. So before I go ahead and introduce our speaker for you today, I'd like to invite Joel Rembowitz, um, admissions counselor at the college to say a few words on behalf of their sponsorship. So Joe, hi. Hey, Chris, thanks for the intro and thanks to everyone for joining us for another workshop. We're happy to sponsor these events. Uh, excited for Shaquana's presentation today. Um, yeah, we really value our, our partnership with the chamber. Uh, we appreciate people checking out our programs and just kind of talking about us around town. Uh, we are a smaller school, so we do kind of rely on that community and that referral base to keep our programs going. So it, just to plug some of the stuff we got coming up for fall, uh, in our Stender School, we have an MBA program. It's focused on leadership and change. Uh, it's a program I've completed. It's kind of near and dear to my heart. We also have a data analytics program starting in fall, uh, project management, as well as some healthcare information specific programs if you're in that universe. So what I'll do is I'll just drop a link to the programs in the chat here. Check them out when you get a chance and share them with who, whoever is uh, willing to listen. And if anyone has any questions or wants to explore these further, or just wants to chat about CSS, I'm around. So my info is in there and you can give me a call or send me a note at any time. But yeah, happy to be here. Thanks again for joining us and welcome. I'll turn it back to Chris and Shaquana. Thanks, Joe. It's hard to believe we're planning fall already. <laughs> um, well, at this time, I'm super excited to introduce our speaker today, Shaquana McIntyre. If you don't know Shaquana, she's a mover and a shaker in Duluth, and I'm so honored to have her here. Uh, Shaquana is the CEO of Family Rice Together. Um, she serves on the Duluth Workforce Board, Development Board, and is currently leading the planning of the Twin Ports Juneteenth celebration, among a whole bunch of other really you wonderful initiatives. Oh, so a quick note, this is intended to be a conversational session. So please add questions or comments um, in the chat, top on audio. We'll also be using Menti um, for some polls that can be accessed on your desktop right here while you're watching the webinar or on your smartphone if that's easier. And we will provide that link in the chat when those are ready. So at this time, Shaquana, thank you so much for joining us today and you're welcome to, to take it away. Awesome, thank you so much, Chris. Um, I would like to thank everyone for coming on board. Um, as Chris has shared, this is a conversational piece um, and it's important that it's conversation, which is why I named it Building a Collective Vision. Um, I want it to be about community. Um, if you do not know me, my name is Shaquana McIntyre. I am the mother of four beautiful children, um, one graduating tomorrow or Friday. Gosh, I should know that better. And um, the, a grandmother of two, a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. And why this is important to me, why this subject is important to me, because we need safe spaces. Um, and when I say we, I mean community, all of us, every one of us. Um, black, brown, and indifferent, but mostly we need spaces where people can be comfortable in their skin, where conversations can be had and be and, and children can be held and uh, families can grow and understand what wealth is and decide what their wealth is. And we need a space that is going to be welcoming to all. And so that is what this is about. Um, my vision and my heart as a mother and a grandmother, a community member, as well as someone who is actively working to not change the roof, but to actually increase and bring vision to the excellence that we already have here. There is reasons why I am still here. It's not because I just love working here. I have come to accept that I love the roof. I love the weather. I love the trees. I love the water. I love that I can go and be in a big city a space that feels like a big city, but it's still small enough to where people know my name. Like, I really love that cheer song. So I welcome you all in. I welcome you to take a deep breath and to, uh, if at all possible, give your full attention to uh, 
um, this presentation so that your words and your vision can be shared in building a collective vision for our community. And if there are parts of this that is going to trigger you or cause you harm, I apologize early. Um, doing this work is hard and we are often harmed in it and we are not often given space when we are harmed to step away and come back to continue in the work without judgment. And so I welcome you to uh, find safe space in this conversation through this difficult conversation because that's that's what this is, is this hard work, but it's a conversation. So thank you for coming on board. As you can see, um, the title of this work is Seeking Duluth Excellence. And why am I seeking Duluth Excellence? Because it's here. Duluth is a beautiful city. We have uh, what most cities do not have, and that is natural resources, which is why I believe the, the market, the housing market is so crazy because we have so many people across the world who are just now learning what we already know about Duluth and that we have an amazing city with some amazing people doing amazing things. And we also have a huge gap a wealth gap, an understanding gap, a welcoming gap, and a safe gap in our community. And when and through seeking the Duluth excellence, we will do the work of closing that gap. So thank you and welcome aboard. Our today, today our agenda is defining Duluth excellence. I need you all to help me define Duluth excellence because we each all come to the table with a different perspective. I am coming to the table as a cis Black woman, a mother, a daughter, an aunt. I cannot come to this table with the perspective of a father or an uncle. And so if you are male and you are in this space, if you are white, if you are brown, if you're Black, whatever your perspective is, please bring that because that is your wealth that you bring to this table that I welcome in with no judgment. Our goal in this conversation over the next 45 to 50 minutes is creating an inclusive narrative. It is important that we redefine what inclusive is. When I hear inclusive, I think black and white. And that is wrong. And I think that is because the narrative that we have been working on in our community for so long has been so based on those two races and we are ignoring the many other beautiful cultures in this community when we are thinking only in indigenous black and white. We have a Hmong community, we have a Muslim community, we have a Hispanic community. And though they are small, they are still here, they are still mighty and they still matter. We're also going to talk about Building 117. Um, I shared with Aubrey yesterday, I'm a dreamer, I'm a visionary. I have uh, the ability to dream up some of the craziest things and sometimes it's new and sometimes it's not and it's just perfect timing. And I believe Building 117 has been dreamed of by many people over many years. And this time, we just happen to be at the right time to dream this dream with the right people at the table to make it happen for our entire community. Also, we will work on discover and cultivate local untapped talent. And why figuring out who and where our untapped talent is will help us strengthen our social economics in Duluth. Our truth is, is that the African-American community makes up 2.5% of our community in the state that also includes those who are incarcerated, I do believe, and our medium income is $24,000. Huge wealth gap, right? And so if we have the ability to find and cultivate untapped talent, we have the ability to close that wealth gap that much more. Are there any questions, thoughts, or ideas before I move forward? I'll check the chat, make sure. Okay, awesome. Okay. Next, we will go to the next slide, introduction. As you all know, our city is framed by all of the beautiful wildness that I don't enjoy, not because I can't get out there and walk the trail. I just don't, let's just be honest. I said this year, I am going to live in my city. I'm not just gonna work in it. I am claiming Duluth as my home. And in claiming Duluth as my home, I will begin to travel and live in this space instead of just working. Um, I have enjoyed Lake Superior since I was, 
I don't know, 12 years old when my family first moved here. And we are framed by that. And yet we do not all enjoy it in the way that it is meant to be enjoyed. And so uh, in knowing this is how our city is framed, if this is the frame of who we are, and I, Shaquana McIntyre, am not enjoying all of what is framed around me, then how will I ever enjoy the excellence of Duluth? And that is where I want us to start our thinking. Aubrey? Oops. All right, you guys. So if you guys can, um, please go to menti.com. As you can see on the screen, um, please let me know in the chat if you cannot see in the screen. Also, um, Chris has put the link in the chat to make it easier for you to access it. Please use the code 19282254. Um, if you look at your screen at the very top, you'll see that code if I spoke that too soon. Awesome, thank you guys for um, answering. And here's the thing, don't, again, this is non-judgmental. Um, just be as honest as you can be. Um, some folks may feel as though Duluth is, a great growing progressive place and others may have experienced Duluth as being a hurtful, harmful place. And that's okay. And it is cold. Oh my God, it's cold. Let's, let us tell the truth. <laughs> So cold, yes, yes. <laughs> Nature, yes, declining, thank you, natural, thank you guys. Water, life, when I hear water, I hear life, life. Collaboration, yes. Thank you guys. Serene, oh, I like that word. Possibilities, yes. I'd like to give us a like one more minute before we move on. I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity who would like to participate to participate. Okay, 10 more seconds. Awesome, thank you, Aubrey. So we have transition and we had possibilities, Serene, I love that. I'm, I'm going to do more of that in my life. Um, natural, um, collaboration, transition, progressive and cold. We should have like extremely cold, like that should have been there, but it is, right? And what's so amazing about the cold, right? As much as I hate it, and it makes my electric bill so expensive because that's how I like to spend my life is warm. What I appreciate about the cold is that the cold give us an opportunity to do a reset and a restart. And so Duluth, 
unlike many places, we get a new start and a reset for months, right? We get rid of all the bugs and all of the things because it is so extremely cold here. So I look forward to continuing this conversation. Um, Aubrey, would you do the next one, please? How do you experience Duluth? Aubrey, can you, I don't, it says that there's two answers, but I'm unable to see them. Ah, thank you. Networking through relationships, friends, coworkers, community groups. I experienced it in many different ways. This is where I want to raise my family and I love the city, but I also see so much potential and want to help Duluth do more and do better. Embracing through the water, floral, yes, community events, work. Through travel, activities, relationships, work and business. Mm. Recharging in nature. Like reading this is filling my soul. Like you guys can come off mute if you want, but just being able to read this is like, I would like to experience Duluth in these same ways. I would, I like the idea of sharing our experience so that we can open our horizon on how we want to experience Duluth. Public service, volunteering, community groups, time by the water. Do we all spend time by the water? Coffee by the lake. A hometown. I have a rich experience with this town. I do my best to be out in the community and think about where we want to go for our future generations. How many generations are we thinking of when we do the work that we're doing? It's hmm, a great question. Yes, seven generations. Does everyone feel seven generations? Awesome. I'll give one more minute for others to answer or answers to come. Ten more seconds. Okay, Aubrey. Thank you. I will share again. Ah, sorry, you guys. So in all the work that we're doing, right, in all the experience that we have, the one thing that we cannot deny is that over time, our community has declined due to COVID, due to 
incarceration, homelessness, social injustice, due to a many of things our community has declined and what that has done to our downtown has destroyed many businesses right and it has also destroyed our downtown it takes away from the beauty of the work that we have done so if you are going if we are going to achieve excellence in big things you you develop the habit in little matters right and for me that looks like dreaming that looks like dreaming all of the time. That looks like speaking the most unspeakable thing in hopes that we are always going to do what needs to be done so that the energy of downtown reflects the lake. In my opinion, downtown does not reflect the lake, right? The lake is large. It is energy. It is angry at times. It is an angry lake at times, right, you guys? Excellence is not an exception. It is a prevailing attitude, and that is written by Colin Powell. So as you all can see um, on this picture is um, a space that is in downtown. Um, it is The address is 117 West Superior Street. Um, it is large. It is unwelcoming. It is dark. It definitely has this glooming, big, empty space that continues to um, really take over our downtown area with no hopes of it becoming anything different until we as a community to decide to do something different. So what does defining Duluth excellence mean to you all? If you can come off of mute and share it, that would be great. Defining Duluth excellence, what does this mean to you? Anyone? Rhonda? Dan Collison, Dan Collison, Sherman Associates. I would define excellence as a holistic picture of uh, seeing people and business and the downtown environment uh, through all the lenses of livability, vibrancy, inclusion, safety, it's like holding all of those things in tension and sometimes in paradox. Thank you, Dan. So I will share Duluth excellence for me is walking down the street and seeing people smiling faces. Um, if anybody has ever seen me on one of my two mile walks, um, I am often, um, dancing honestly because that is what excellence is i'm safe in my skin i'm safe in my body and so i love the idea of walking down the street seeing vibrant colors seeing people smile seeing people laugh um and as of recently it's almost i it's like i've been fighting to find those smiles in people and i recognize that is because there is a lack of joy because we have so much lack in our community though us professionals at the table at this table we can speak to all of the beautiful things that we get to enjoy about duluth excellence but often because of the gap the wealth gap and the social economic gap and the housing gap and all of the issues we are are often forced to look at the sadness of Duluth. And Duluth is much more than the sadness that we um, are seeing and experiencing at times. So how do you see our city? We are the port city, there's tourism, there's commerce, there's manufacturing. Like what are we doing that is the greatest of all that we're doing? Would anybody like to share? So the port city, obviously we're making money, right? We, I don't know much about how great we're doing as the port, right? I know I'm seeing lots more boats on the water. Um, I see more families are experiencing the waters in different ways through sports activities on the water. All of those things are great, but they're not welcome for everyone, right? Tourism, our tourism is up. 
the money is coming in, but how are our tourists experiencing Duluth? Are they seeing and experiencing Duluth in its excellence or are they having to walk over trash? Are they having to walk over our community members who are struggling and suffering from homelessness? How are they experiencing Duluth? right? When it comes to the commerce, how are we experiencing the money in our community? How is the money moving throughout and reaching those who need it most? And that's all of us, right? The reality is the inflation of the dollar is not just affecting the poor. It is affecting the middle class. It is affecting the wealth. It is affecting us as a whole. The manufacturing, where are the opportunities for us to build manufacturing? Oh, sorry. Um, I see a hand raise. I'm going to butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Garnis. Oh, it's it's Mary Garnis. Garnis. Okay. Hi there, St. Saint, Saint North County. Um, I didn't I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to have a point where I could jump in here, but I wanted to go back to that original question that you had about what does it mean or look like um, when I see people helping each other, um, lifting other people up especially those that are disadvantaged in our community. That's what I see as success, that we're helping each other out, lifting each other up, um, building an understanding of what the needs are and the desires in the community. So I, I think if, um, you know, those, those people that um, maybe have it the worst or, you know, are homeless in our community, if we're um, providing resources to lift those people up. I think that means we're all doing better. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. Welcome. I 100% I agree is that the one thing that Duluth is and has always been, and I believe will continue to be, is a helpful city. I can't tell you how many times I have come in contact with someone who recently moved here and they're just like, man, people are so nice. They they want to help. They And then they have an experience that changed that thought. But we have more good in our community than we have bad. The reality is, is that the bad gets the 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 light, right? We we get the bad of the worst gets more light shined on it than all of the greatness. And why it is important that we are changing our narrative is because if we are going to welcome in wealth in our community, this narrative and the story that is being told by Duluth for Duluth has to change. When people of color, Black professionals outside of Duluth began to Google Duluth and to understand what Duluth has to offer them as a professional black or brown person, the first thing they see is the three statues. As if that is all the work that we have going on is three black men being lynched here because of a lie. And we are so much more than that. And the only way for people to know who we are is to change the narrative. Dan? Yeah, uh, thank you for that. And the narrative is an interesting one, right? Like I had a conversation with someone who's invested in the manufacturing and industrial side of Duluth. And, you know, I don't know how it's been used, but I know it's been circulated that Duluth needs to, is a post-industrial city, right? Because there's parts of the industrialization that doesn't seem to have a match to the, the climate refuge narrative, right? And so, what feels to me like an interesting exercise, even as you described how uh, individuals of color, African-Americans, as they experience, understand, whether it's visiting or the narrative, uh, are there ways to ensure a larger way of framing things? Meaning, in this case, this, this manufacturing industrial person was like, you know, there's really good jobs here in industry. And while it's, it's changing, like all industry is changing, uh, we shouldn't say we're a post-industrial city because we have industrial here and it has value. So is there a different way to understand it? Is there a different way to frame it that if you come to Duluth, there are jobs of different kinds, including mm -hmm. industrial. And so I'm sort of just waxing a little bit like when, cause you had sort of framing around what's the poor, what's manufacturing? Like, mm -hmm. are there ways to, to not be in any way dishonest about history, but to be, really invested in mm -hmm. all that Duluth has to offer uh, and inviting people into the 
definition making of what that means. And so uh, I just, that was the first time where someone really challenged, oh, we're a post-industrial refuge climate city. Like, well, wait a minute. I think we need to think about this differently because Duluth is vibrant because people can be employed and have good jobs of various kinds. So anyway, mm -hmm. just some thoughts that sort of bubbled up as you brought that up. No, thank you, Dan. I think that what you're speaking to brings value to the exact point of this presentation. We have to change the narrative. And the only way to change the narrative is to begin to have conversations about the narrative that's already out there. What is out there that we love about our city? What part of our narrative do we just love? We love being helpers. We love being welcoming, right? There's for the most part, right? Let's just be honest. Everybody in Duluth is not welcoming. Everybody in Duluth is not looking for change. We have old Duluth and we have new Duluth and we're crashing and clashing. Um, but the truth is we have no choice but to change the narrative so that our next seven generations don't have to do the work. The, the point that I was raised with with my grandmother is I should not be living on my own prayers. I should be living on the prayers of my grandmothers and my mothers and my great grandmother. I should be setting out the foundation of my next seven generations and my next five generations, my next three generations, so that they are not having to do the work that we should have already done. And I believe in our community, we have not changed the narrative. We have not done the work. We've done a lot of planning. How many of us have been a part of 62 meetings in a year and we have the best plans? I think if we all collectively went through our computers and pulled out all of the plans from the last 10 years, we got some great ideas, right? Which is why this slide is up here. We are great at talking, great at talking. Like some of us, our tongue should be tired. Like, let's just be honest. But it's time for us to start doing the work because there's plenty of work to be done. And I appreciate the work of the Duluth Task Force. I appreciate the work of Sherman. I appreciate the work of Life House because honestly, all of us in the room, we are doing the work. But are we doing the work collectively to change the narrative? How are we telling people who are coming here as refuge? for refuge, as refugees, that they are welcome and that we have space for them because we are all seeing them pop up on corners and asking for handouts because of the lack of communication, the lack of welcomeness. The, like there's reason why that we have more people standing on a corner asking for money and they're not all homeless and they're not all addicted to some kind of drug. That's not our truth, right? We should not be known as the city of opioids in the state of Minnesota. Our relatives should not be overdosing 10 times more than anyone else in the country, but that is our narrative. We're not talking, our narrative is not loud enough. The narrative that our water is healing, that it is life, is not loud enough for me. Right, We live on the greatest body of water. And how are we telling that story to where people can find life and healing in that water and not just a way to make money from it? So I want to challenge us to start doing the work. What are we, and I know we're all busy, right? Like, and that's why it's so important. Like we all in a room are busy. That's why you're here, right? Because you understand and you know just from the title that we need to do the work of changing the narrative. But that's why it is so important that we start to think about the untapped talent so the weight can be off of our shoulders and be on the, the shoulders of the community, not just our city officials, not those who in need and not those who love to do the work, but all of us, because that is the synergy that we need in order to keep pushing forward. It is the synergy that keeps waking me up. I'm visionary. There's a reason why Family Rise Together has a financial advisor and a financial manager. I can't do it. <laughs> it's not for me, right? There's a reason why organizations have different departments because we all can't do everything. But if we all take our own slice of the pie, our own slice of the narrative with intentionality of why we are showing up to the table with truth and honesty and transparency, we can't help but to show the world 
how excellent we are as a city, as a community, as multiple communities. We are not just one large community. And yet that is the narrative because that is the state of Minnesota's narrative. One Minnesota. Well, I love that, but I also dislike it because one Minnesota stops the truth of I'm different. I have different values and I don't have the same skill set and value and understanding that Dan has, that Mary has, that Jordan has. I don't, but together, could you imagine what it would be like if together, truly, we were pushing forward in changing the narrative to do all the work that we're already doing? So, sorry, that was my sermon. I'm <laughs> so moving forward, inclusive narrative, developing access to excellence inclusively. What does that mean, inclusiveness? Does inclusive mean that I want to welcome you in so that you can fit in? Does inclusive mean that you are welcome and your differences are welcome? Or does inclusive mean I'm doing this because the law says I have to and I'm just going to tolerate you? What does inclusive mean? And how do we define it in how we will move forward in rede redefining the narrative for our community? Go ahead, Mary. Um, inclusive, lots of definitions out there, but I, I really feel like it means allowing people the space to show up as their authentic selves, to share their stories and experiences and, and to have them be um, absorbed or respected, appreciated by the group, even though it might not be part of the, the norm. I think we don't learn and grow unless we allow for those spaces for individuals to show up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. You know, here's I, so I worked at TBI for um, a few years, you guys, a lot of years. That's how I got through college and grad school. Um, and I'll never forget um, Lois, one of my favorite clients, God rest her soul. Um, she was a, an amazing crafter, you guys. She could like, she could make a scarf in 10 minutes and it was quality, right? She could take me into the store and say, no, we don't want that yarn. No, we don't want this. We want the best of the best. And so we're sitting on the couch and I'm like, man, I really want you to teach me how to do this. Like I'm in my late twenties. I have no idea how to crochet or do any of the things, right? And she's trying to teach me. And if anybody is a crocheter in here, I wish I had something. But so when you're crocheting, you're like doing this, right? And you're like, it's, I still don't know how to do it. I'm 43 years old. I never picked it up ever again. And she laughed at me and she looked at me and she said, who's the person here with the brain injury? And I'm like, well, obviously me, because you got it. I can't, I don't know how to do this. And we laughed and we chuckled. And what I accepted in that moment, at my weakest, she was her strongest. And at my strongest, she was her weakest. I was strong when she was having seizures. I was strong when she was missing her family and nobody was showing up for holidays. But she was strong when I couldn't even figure out how to work two non-sharp needles so I could make my kid a scar. And we laughed and our differences allowed for her to then make money off of me because I paid her to make the scars. <laughs> I was sick of trying, I paid her to make the scars. But what that taught me was, I don't have to do everything. I don't have to want to know everything. I just want to be willing to be successful. And that looks like failing forward. It looks like failing backwards. It looks like failing forward again. And then it also looked like saying, you know what, this just ain't for me. <laughs> it's not for me. And our goal in becoming innovative is not about always being successful. It's about being hopeful. 
It's about being hopeful about being successful. It's about knowing that I may not get this done, but I'm brave enough and I'm crazy enough to believe in the innovation of doing something different without losing the history and the truth of where we started. And I believe, unfortunately, in our community, the narrative has stayed the same because we are afraid we're gonna lose the richness of our history when in fact, we should be using the richness of our history to lift us up. We should be using the richness of our history to remind us where we wanna go and where we don't ever wanna go again. There's reasons why innovation is needed. Strategy is needed. We need innovation more than we need success. We need failure but we need to fail in our innovation in order to keep moving forward. Oh, I'm sorry, I see things in the chat. Okay. Chris, can we go towards definitions? Thank you. And Mary, I see you put in the chat, creation of plans is the easy part. Putting things into action takes real emotion. Oh, sorry, I lost it mental and physical toll. Okay, Jess, I wanna go back. Sorry, I know we've moved on, but I wanted to share that Duluth Excellence gives me hope for a world that prioritizes community and community care more than self-sufficiency success. Pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, corporate profits, et cetera. And then we got a, a clap there from Chris, thank you. Um, Jordan shared the narrative is critical to begin with and thinking about the vision of Duluth. Language is very powerful. Listen, Jordan, you are so right about the language being so powerful. Okay, um, as you all can see, um, please go to menti.com for um, adding in the definition of uh, defining what you believe is public entrepreneurship. Thank you guys. So we have startup mindset through the lens of community, doing something to make a change in your community, not just talking about it, yes. Helping to build and sustain a positive social infrastructure, an innovative approach to solving community problems using collaboration. Entrepreneurship that benefits the collective rather than the soul, rather than solely the individual, mobilizing and building together. Thank you guys so much. A business approach that is open to all, yes. I wanna give us a few more minutes or one more minute. Um, I would like to honor our time. We're at 11.47. And so Thirty more seconds. Create solutions to meet shared opportunities to build a stronger community for all. Ten more seconds. Awesome, thank you guys. And just so everyone know, I will leave up 
um, we'll have these available. So if you come back and you're like, hey, I would like to add something else in, Aubrey, correct me if I'm wrong, or Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, um, will people still be able to have access to this? Um, can we all please take a moment and define untapped talent? I will, as you all are um, writing in, I'll share this story. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I've shared this story before. If you've heard it before, my apologies. Um, as, as I've shared with you all, I am a mother and I'm a grandmother. Um, my journey um, started when my mother was 15 and my father was 17 when they gave birth to me in Gary, Indiana. And I was born in 1980. And that was during the time where the crack epidemic was just getting started. We had our first black mayor and the city was in ruins and it continues to be in ruins as of today. Why is untapped talent so important? As a youth, I didn't know what my talent was going to be. I knew I talked a lot, drove my parents crazy, honestly, my grandmother too, because I used to talk to in church. Um, but what I discovered when I, when our family relocated here to Duluth and I started to get involved in the Lincoln Park community and I started to uh, um, attend the Boys and Girls Club, I realized people were like, super talented and beautiful and artsy. And like, for me, Duluth excellence has a lot to do with the arts. I didn't get to see artists in the way that I get to see it here in Duluth in Indiana. And then, and I think that's because I was in a smaller community. There was much more poverty and there, the access to people was very limited because we built community based off blocks, not race and not social economics. Anywho, um, when I came here, when we moved here and we began to connect with people and engage in community, I understood untapped talent being not finding value in people's natural being. I'll say that again. Untapped talent is not having value in someone's natural being. So, um, if you know anything about the African Americans' hair and our skin, um, you have to be a talented soul, <laughs> a very talented soul, in order to uh, manage, care for, and grow our hair. You can't just use any kind of chemicals. You can't just use any kind of shampoo. And you cannot assume because everyone in a household is from the same mother and father that you can use the same products for our hair and our skin. Um, often as a mother of four, I was spending 200 plus dollars a month going to Walgreens um, when all of my children were young and just trying to figure it out, right? Figure out a formula. and. Uh, it was my untapped talent, the problem solving of creating something natural and organic for my family to save money that taught me that I was a chemist. I love chemistry and I wish I would have learned that. That's a talent of mine because I love the creation of something that is useful for all, right? Um, Duluth has so much untapped talent because we have a issue and a concern and a problem, whatever language we wanna use, we have a problem of not seeing the talent and the value of people. And so I just wanna share that with you and read really quickly, talents not, known, not yet known, not readily assessed and or underutilized. Many of us who are at this table, we see the same people at all the tables. And that's because those are the tapped, tapped talents that we are aware of. And I don't have an answer for how do we get access to these untapped talents, but I do believe that in order to change the narrative, in order to do something great and to sustain greatness in our community, we damn better show, knock on doors, start pulling up the rocks, moving the trees to find the talent that we are not utilizing in our community. Also, someone wrote, people who have talents, gifts, or insights that are not 
part or not fully a part of the larger narratives in the community, including places of employment, community, organizations, and public voice. Yes, thank you. Pools of highly skilled and passionate people who are not yet engaged in ways they are welcome to use their natural gifts. Yes, we are often as organizations going into community based off of how our funding is created. Our building of community looks like providing gas cards, transportation, child care, and food. I believe a part of our ability to reach the untapped talent is once we have these community conversations, besides just having them sign in, we should start learning them by name because we are going to the very community who are living with the problems that we are as organizations are trying to solve and getting the answer from them. And then we create job descriptions that requires a, a degree at times only for that person with the degree to implement the solutions that we learned about from the untapped talent. Why are we not going back to those individuals who gave us that information to actually increase their ability to become useful talent in our community? And yes, that's more work, but that also means that we're gonna get access to untapped talent. Thank you guys. I, we have a few minutes. I'm going to move on quickly so that we can talk about Building 117. Uh, we have five minutes, so my apologies for being so long-winded. So Building 117, as I said before, I'm a dreamer. I have vision. There's nothing new under the sun is what my grandmother told me. Building 117 is 53,000 square feet in downtown Duluth. We as community members know Building 117 as the old Maurice building. And if you ever have been in there as of recently, Maurice's staple is still there. They, their name, their energy, it is still in that space. And when I walked in, I knew that we could harness the beautiful potential that Maurice's had there and turn it to something that could be open to community at large. So our hope is that we begin to rise together. The secret joy in work is contained in one word, and that is excellence. To know how to do something well is to enjoy it. You all, I love Duluth, and I love what I do in helping create a better narrative and a different story. Currently, Building 117 is large. It is empty, it is cold, it's centrally located, and it's on the bus line. But through a collective, it can be a large, vibrantly occupied building, centrally located on the bus line, technically superior, elegant, comprehensively designed workspaces, technical assistance on site. As you all know, I am huge for economic development and Family Rise Together focuses on individuals from ideal stage and those who are hobbyists because it is the lack of language that helps, that, that, that hinders individuals such as myself, those who are impoverished and those who are in survival mode from being able to move forward a business. And so Building 117 will become a safe, supportive space to expand calculated entrepreneurial risk and innovation through education, wraparound services, right? It's going to help us foster resilient success. It's going to allow for us to support individuals and individuals and collectives to fail forward. Because as you know, as an entrepreneur, only 1% of us actually get to move forward. 1% of the many things that we dream of. And building 117 can foster that resilience for success. Building 117 for entrepreneur will contain working space and technical support. The network access required to expand business vision and capacity. The reality is, you guys, as you all know, Duluth has amazing resources, amazing resources for entrepreneurship. But what we don't have is a collective space for those amazing resources to be as bright and shiny and available for all. I've noticed it's 
11.57. I want to give us some time. I'll slow down, give some time for some questions. Um, and uh, um, welcome in for us to slow down, take some deep breaths, and prepare for our transition to something new in our day. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Shaquana. Please, Dan, if you have a question. Nope. I just wanted to make sure before we signed off, uh, I was grateful for Shaquana, and I've had the privilege of talking with her a little bit about this last piece, and really uh, trust that the the notion and idea of collective envisioning can be actualized in an inclusive economic development paradigm for downtown. So I just want to give big applause before we sign off. Thanks, Dan. You know, I welcome any other questions. Um, you're welcome to pop in on audio or, or place it in the chat before we do have to hop off in another minute. And we do have a QR code. We do have a landing page. Um, as we are building out 117, we do um, have plenty of space for partnership, ideas, thoughts. The name is there. We have the framework for the excellence but we need each and every one of us to come on board because we have a youth who are not built to go to college and they need something else to say, your untapped talent is welcomed here. Dream big, dream crazy, dream wild, and we'll dream with you. I thank each of you. I thank you, the Duluth Chambers. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, again, just thank you for listening and adding to this. Thank you so much, Shaquana. We're right at about noon, so let's go ahead and close out. Shaquana, if you want to stay after for an extra minute or two, we can see if anyone has any questions left over. Um, but thank you for attending today. Shaquana, super inspirational. Your vision is amazing, and I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Um, I thank will you. also be uh, sharing the recording of this webinar after we close today. So if you want to rewatch or share it again with colleagues, please do so.